Holy cow. Into that bucket. It's still coming. It's still surging in. Every month we're seeing these water levels be higher and higher. There are some areas that we are going to try to protect at all costs. Really, there's three options. Protect, adapt, or move. My name is Gabe McPhail and I am the Community Development and Engagement Coordinator for the Town of Vinyl Haven. My job is to facilitate projects and processes that are undertaken by the volunteer committees that serve the select board and the town. Downtown Vinyl Haven really is the economic hub of the island in terms of where the majority of industry is, where I think all retail is. Main Street essentially serves as like the primary economic corridor for the island. So there's three spots that I like to look at. And one's right here on the mill. The majority of our income comes in in July and August. August is packed. July is about 75. And June and September, maybe 50 to 60 percent. But, but that's it. <laughs> I have a very sober conversation in my head fairly regularly about, you know, 20 years down the road, is the property going to be worth anything if climate change, sea level rise is beginning to adversely, you know, impact our town here? I'm the eternal optimist <laughs> in the relationship. He's the eternal pessimist, so we're balancing. But um, the unfortunate thing is that our kids are pretty much definitely not going to be taking this over. They've already talked about how when they run the Tidewater, this and that, and I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure about that, guys. <laughs> Vinyl Haven, like many coastal communities, is susceptible to sea level rise and increasing frequency of storms. Their downtown is in a low-lying area. It's built essentially not on fill, but on granite quarried from the island in the 1800s. We're talking about 2050, a foot and a half of sea level rise. A third of their commercial buildings are going to be flooded. So that's in the range of the next 30 years. So it's not a 2100 target. It's, it's an immediate concern. What it means on the ground is that emergency management can't access certain locations on the island. They're cut off from the rest of the island. It severely affects the overall economic and I would say social uh, health of the island. That means that our downtown might have to change you know, where it's located. I think there's Scientifically, no question that climate change is happening. The more literature that comes out, the worse the projections get. They're never getting better. The Maine Climate Action Plan is a four-year plan to get Maine towards the aggressive emissions reduction goals put into law by Governor Mills. The emissions reductions targets were a 45% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 and an 80% reduction in emissions by 2050 with a goal of carbon neutrality by 2045. Most of the time when people think about sea level rise, they think about this very, very slow process that's going up maybe an inch here and there, you know, an inch a decade. Ah, it doesn't sound like that much. That's not that big of a deal. Think of sea level as the background and then storms are on top of it, okay? In Maine, there's only a one foot difference between what we call a 100 year storm and a 10 year storm. One foot difference. We had a, a January and February northeaster and southeaster in 1978. That's our 100 year storm. So the 78 storm would have a 10% chance occurring every year with one foot of sea level rise. It, it, 
that's a significant thing when you're thinking about it from a standpoint of planning for storm events. So I mean, at some point today, this will that road will likely still flood. Um, and it probably already has, hasn't it? Those hundred-year storm projections from FEMA don't take into account sea level rise. So, you know, we've got both sets of maps now that are showing us what the potential is. Um, with a lot of factors in between, but at the same time, you said, well, we can, we can wait and let's just see if it happens. Uh, but it also means the infrastructure continues to deteriorate. The Climate Action Plan calls for the increase of technical assistance to, to communities of all sizes. Of the 120 island and coastal communities in Maine, 11% have a municipal town planner. And three quarters of them have no planner and very little regional planning support. These small communities are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis to address their everyday imminent needs and writing a grant report and working with an engineer to do a vulnerability assessment can be beyond the scope of what they have the human capacity to do. They need a point person to help them with technical assistance and that's one thing that the Climate Action Plan is addressing. One of the projections that we were looking at was, it was I think it was like 10 feet, like the parking lot's maybe three feet on an average high tide. You know, so there's the elephant in the room, right? So we're talking about putting money into Main Street, significant amount of money to do this, work on the sidewalks and the road and the drainage, all that infrastructure you don't see that has to be done today. You know, at the same time, there's this, well, in 50 years, I mean, if that's a possibility, maybe it doesn't make sense to have your hotels and your restaurants and your retail in those areas that are likely to be flooded. One thing I do think- I think for me, the, the, there is like this pervasive feeling of, of despair. Um, and it is hard for me to ignore it. And certainly I feel like part of my job is to inspire people and to engage people and to bring people together and have them accomplish things so they feel a sense of hope. I don't know how parents talk to their children about it. I don't know you know, even how neighbors talk to each other about it. Should I say I cry a lot? Because I do. The Island Institute started to hear about sea level rise from community members. We started to hear about concerns around flood insurance increasing and working waterfront properties. So a few of the ways that the Island Institute can help is through just purely, you know, scientific translation, information out to the community members, raising awareness. We've created comics about sea level rise. We host symposia to hit on key topics that are important like financing, adaptation. A lot of great work has gone on in the state when it comes to planning and preparing for sea level rise. Too often these communities face the bottleneck of getting money to actually pay for this. These are not things that can be bankrolled through the taxes in any small town. So here are the things I want you to remember from my talk. Mitigation is much cheaper than adaptation. Every day we hear about how doing something about climate change is going to cost too much. They are not comparing the costs of climate change mitigation to the cost of adaptation. There is not enough money in the world to adapt to climate change. This is not something anyone has ever experienced. There is no historical guidance for how to deal with a problem this size. It is our challenge to be the first ones to have to deal with it. And like all trailblazers, we will, of course, be the ones who get whacked in the face. Chad and I have been talking about what the plan is, what kind of business plan we have to look at making, and how far ahead we can reasonably expect for this to be a viable business before we just can't do it anymore. Main Street was just this economic, uh, vibrant, magical community. And now half of it is gone. Uh, and 
I can't tell you how much I missed that. And if I had only known back then how much I'd miss it 60 years later, I'd have played a larger role in trying to preserve it. One way or another, I think the determination to be resilient will succeed. It can be overwhelming, it can be really scary. I can understand why people would do nothing. I mean, I think people, myself included, I can become sort of um, just frozen with a sense of like, I, there, it's too overwhelming, I don't know what to do. But I think that there are just things you do because it's the right thing to do. We can't keep sweeping it under the rug and pretending it doesn't exist. It's, it's happening and it's happening in our lifetimes. The sea is rising and we need to plan for it and Vinyl Haven has done a great job of that. They're a small community, they don't have a lot of capacity, but they have a concerned group of citizens who are leading the charge to figuring out how their island is going to handle it. There are things that we can do and it starts with educating yourself and educating your neighbors and convincing the citizenry in your town that this is a problem worth paying attention to now. You can read the Climate Action Plan. You can become familiar with what the scenarios are looking out 30 years for your town. It takes one or two committed individuals to lead the charge, and they're out there. They just need to come forward.